What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. This is going to be the next album review into the Mr. Bongle discography. Now, I had not really planned out a thing of reviewing the rest of their albums, but hey, since their discography is very brief and short, and in honour of their new release of their re-recorded demo of The Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny, I feel like I want to review the rest of their discography. So I'm going to be reviewing the second album from the band entitled none other than Disco Volante. Disco Volante is Mr. Bungle's second studio album, released on the Warner Brothers Records label on October 10th, 1995. This was self-produced by the band and is considered to be their most experimental of all their albums mixing elements from genres from death metal, jazz, Arabic music, music concrete, easy listening, etc. Many of the songs are instrumental or feature wordless vocals. The album's title refers to the yacht of the same name featured in the James Bond film Thunderball, meaning flying saucer in Italian. The band had previously done a cover version of the film's theme song. This album would be Theo Langell's final album with the band, one of the original members, who left after the tour due to artistic differences. Band member Danny Heifetz commented, I miss him. He added a huge chemical imbalance that helped us on the road. He hates us, and rightfully so. The music changed, plain and simple. Very little call for saxes, trombone, or flute. He was an original member, I'm not, makes me feel a bit like a union buster. Upon release, the album received highly favourable reviews. All Music wrote, and I quote, Mr. Bungle is the musical equivalent of a David Lynch movie, calling the music a totally original and new musical style, and an album that sounds like nothing that currently exists. They referred to the track Desert Search for Techno Allah as a Middle Eastern techno number that has to be heard to be believed. Stylus Magazine, in their 2005 review, wrote, A decade later, Disco Volante still sounds daring. If you think Disco Volante is one of the most advanced, challenging albums to get into, then I will simply agree. It makes the first self-titled album feel less uncompromising and less ballistic. This is easily the most difficult and really focusing trying to get into what's going on albums. It's the same thing that some people have with a Captain Beefheart album or a Frank Zappa album because there's a lot of these complex yet really great and unique passageways of making music this different. Mr. Bungle is one of these perfect examples why they would make something this great. And as the second album to be following up the self-titled album with its really humorous, catchy, addicting, memorable and beloved direction of music, Disco Volante is, for me, like... An assault. It is an assaulting album to really question yourself. How the hell can they make something like this? How would they make something very different and varied, even more than the self-titled album? There is a lot to digest on this album from the start to the finish. The opening song, Everyone I Went to High School With, is dead. It's a very distorting tone on the bass guitars and the drums are really attacking menacing sound is very different to quote unquote aka Travolta from the first album because that track alone has some rhythm but a very eerie sound but here this is instantly starting to take things down into something dark. Chemical Romance, jazzy drums and loud percussion that's booming again while the organ pops in with some bass playing around the root notes. This is a first for Mike Patton since 
the first album, and even Angel Dust from Faith No More, where he is becoming really much more experimental with his vocals. And I totally love that. From his cleans to distortions to other high-pitched voices and his range became even much more of a wider approach than any other vocalist that I can ever listen to. It's mostly less chaotic. It does feature touches of music concrete at the end. Carry Stress in the Jaw, my favourite song on this album. It's such a crazy ride with hyper energy and fast styles on the drums, backing keyboards while Patton sings, and then moments of blazing, distorted, fast, thrashy style guitar riffing and some saxophone to change it into some jazz fusion style. From the gentle sounds to the chaotic madness on the metal riffs, this is a shit show of fun and frenetic arrangements. Then, as you think that this track couldn't finish, there is actually a secret track on this album, Sacred Song. It's a very jam-maddening piece of music with Patton's changeable vocals sounding like an old man, while the tone to this track after the main song of Carrie Stress in the Jaw it's very strange on this number. Very clever bass lines throughout. High-pitched, howling-sounding vocals. I really like that the notes follow the vocal passages together on some parts of this piece of music. It is another really cool music instrumentation that I like a lot after the main track of Carry Stress in the Jaw. Desert Search for Techno Allah. This is another wild number, loads of stuff going on, various percussions with the tempo and the beat, buzzing synthesizer sounds and other instruments combined that was popping in and out. It's shaking all over in many different directions. It is one of the numbers where most members became so consistent by experimenting with various instruments and the tone to this song is as crazy. And I really like that the rest of Mr. Bungle have their other hidden talents to share their different roles of other instruments. This one features lyrics that were written by Trey Spruance in another language. Crazy noises around the whole piece of music. That's one of the best tracks on this album. Violenza Domestica in English of domestic violence on child abuse. You can hear the sound of knife scraping, feedbacks, loops, voices, multi-tracked. The lyrics are on the Italian style on this one. Sounds of organ and piano to make the sound quite dramatic. It isn't as a free cow like the previous tracks, but it still sounds absolutely fantastic with the tone and the atmosphere of Patton's falsetto in the background on most of the song. Much more changeable once again. You can hear loud crashes sounds and ASMR really close to the microphone whispers. After School Special, this one is very short but quite humorous. Sweet tone and the music being steady and focused on the less crazy mad sound. On the ending part, the high-pitched spoken word pieces remind me of something on the Frank Zappa Mothers of Invention albums or even something from one of his solo albums being Lumpy Gravy. Phlegmatics, this is another monster of a song. The sound from the start is heavy and brutal. This is one of the heavier sounding songs on the album. Mike's vocals follow the notes with the guitars. The sound overall on this piece is pretty much one of the darker songs because of the distortion that drones on a lot of these pieces. High-pitched avant-garde saxophones noises all over the shop. It brings back more of the loudness at the end. Mamishka Mausquaz. This is one of my other high favourites on the album because of the hyperness and the energy. Things crashing into each other from saxophones, drumming and hearing random cartoon style noises at any space and time then pushes things further into uncompromising strengths. This is a style of Mr. Bungle that keeps attracting to my listening experience as much as 
any other fan because of what's going on and it was over the top nature and that's one of the things that I love about Mr. Bungle. Another groundbreaking part of Patton's improvisational vocals entirely throughout. It's to me, as I would describe it, like a mentally insane breakage into the over-the-top madness. The Bends, this is, for me, one of those really disturbing tracks on the record. It's mostly an ambient, dark ambient side instrumental piece, though not all of these things are connected together because there were separate recordings of various sounds and unusual stuff around but it's at the same time a unique composition that continues the overall weirdness unnerving feel i enjoy this one a lot and towards the end it meant to push things deeper because it grows more loud and uncomfortable sounds of intensity and increasing it higher and higher and louder and then abruptly stops and it gives you some kind of a different reaction than what you would think of saying. Backstroking starts things on a doo-wop feel as I really like this kind of sound where they would go from a different genre to this genre or that genre. Basically combine them all. Clean guitars on this one this time and the delivery stands in for the most part and hearing some more of these keyboards with various effects. It takes things down to something relaxing and coping than the previous track of the bends. Platypus, another metal style with awesome drumming and great guitar tones. The structure was perfectly tight with the avant-garde stuff again. Woodwind instruments popping in, voice changes everywhere with the reverb really stylistic and another one of the classic highlights on the album being one of the best songs from mr bungle of all time in my opinion like a lot of the stuff from the first album and from california then merry go bye bye very major sweet when the song proceeds but lyrically is nothing on a positive side because it is very very dark but musically it was at first on a positive tone, and then bursts through the roof with some more eerie and assaulting power. It basically destroys the first piece of bars from the earlier on sections of this song, and wild looseness of its progressive nature switches to various ways every time when the band explores into some more stuff next. Bleaks things down, into chilling keyboards and haunting lyrics to end the whole song with a very weird look to question things after the whole album's expression to anyone listening to this. There's another really random piece where it's Bungle fucking around in the studio, loud saxophones to disrupt your comfortable hearing and it's like that they're trying to do that on purpose. It's such a strange way to conclude the album after the actual finale of the album of Merry Go Bye Bye. Mr. Bongle's Disco Volante is one of my favourite challenging albums to listen to, not only from this band, but of any form of music. So if you really want to take up to the challenge and to try get into what's going on on this album, then be my guest. I really like the production and it's personally probably my favourite production from this album than the other two because it sounds very complete, everything is like crisp and very well balanced. I'm going to give Disco Volante by Mr. Bungle a 9.5 out of 10 and I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on this album in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.